The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. (laughs) The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine. Every day, millions of women all over America serve parquet margarine because it tastes so good. To market, to market, to get some parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You like it, you love it, like millions who say their favorite margarine. P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine, made by Kraft. It's early morning in Summerfield, and the little town has stirred itself awake, ready to greet another day. And what is the great Gildersleeve doing? <laughs> What's that? Looking for? Oh, alarm. Oh, shut up. Uh. Well, better get up, I guess. Uh, looks like a beautiful day outside. Too nice to go to work. Well, little Robin out there. He wants to say hello. Yeah. Hello, little Robin. (laughs) Wish I were you. And I wouldn't have to go to the office. Could just spend the whole day looking for big, fat worms. (laughs) It'd be nice to just loaf around the house all day. Oh, no use wishing. Only time I get to stay home from work is when I'm sick. So what's the use of it? Hey... I could call up and tell the mayor I'm sick. Uh, that wouldn't be telling the truth. Uh, do have a little headache. Could lead to a cold. Cold could lead to pneumonia. Maybe I'd better stay home. Wouldn't want to catch pneumonia. <laughs> eee, you're sly, Gildersleeve. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, Bertie. Well, I hope he hurries up. I'm all ready to start his day. Go ahead and cook them, Bertie. I'll eat them. I know you would, Leroy, but you've had enough. <laughs> Bye, what an appetite. Uh, good morning, children. Hi, Uncle. Good mor- well, for heaven's sake. Hmm? What are you wearing your bathrobe for? Well... Aren't you going to the office? Uh, no, I'm not going to work today. I'm going to stay home and loaf. I mean rest. <laughs> Rest? What for? Well, your old uncle doesn't feel very well today, children. You don't? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, nothing serious. I just feel the cold coming on. <coughs> just thought I... Just thought I wouldn't take any chances. Oh. You really feel sick, huh? <sighs> yes, I do, my boy. Then can I eat your eggs? No. <laughs> that is, maybe I should force myself to eat them. Must keep my strength up, you know. Oh. Anki, hadn't you better call the mayor and tell him you're sick? Well, I'll have Bertie call him after a while. Guess I'll have a little breakfast now. Bertie! Coming! Oh, good morning, Mr. Gillsleeve. I'll start your... Oh, you're wearing your bathrobe. Yes, Bertie. I'm not going to the office today. You see, I don't feel very well. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Mr. Gilsey. Uh, it's just a little cold. Well, you stay right here at home, and Bertie will take care of you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, guess I'll have my eggs now. Mr. Gilsey, you can't have no eggs. Huh? Not with a cold. In fact, Bertie's not going to let you have any breakfast at all. What? You can have just a little grapefruit juice, and that's all. But, Bertie... You know what they say, starve a cold and feed a fever. Uh, uh, Bertie, isn't that the other way around? Feed a cold and... No, sir, that's old-fashioned. 
I just read the other day, you starve a cold and feed a fever. But, Bertie... I don't care what they used to say. Nowadays, you feed a cold, you starve it to death. Yeah. <laughs> Bertie, I... That's right. All you get is grapefruit juice, because you starve a cold and you feed a fever. Why didn't I say I had a fever? <laughs> This is the life, all right. Staying home, just sitting here in my den, taking it easy. Uh, let's see what's in the paper. Yeah, cotton. Uh, uh. Hey, Al, can I have the comics? Uh, Leroy, what are you doing here? You're going to be late for school. Are you kidding? I don't have any school today. No school? Why not? They're rehearsing for the graduation exercises. Oh, dear. Sure. I can keep you company here all day. That's what you think. You go on outside and play, Leroy. Can I read the comics first? No, you can't. Go on now. Go play with Craig or something. Oh, for corn's sake. That kid. <laughs> uh, guess I'll read the comics myself. Well, uh, Orphan Annie got away from Axel again. <laughs> what the... In Van Hardest Felt Mills, makers of Aunt Nellie's buckwheat cake flour, the wheat cakes that buck you up, presents Kitty Cavanaugh of Keokuk Falls, a real life story of just plain folks. Oh, my goodness. Bertie! Bertie! Bertie, do we have to have that radio on so loud? What's that? The radio. Oh, yes, that's a wonderful program, Mr. Gillsleeve. I hear it every morning. I know, Bertie, but I... I turn it up good and loud so I can hear it in the kitchen when I'm doing the dishes. Oh, well, couldn't you just... Can you hear it in here all right? I certainly can. That's good. And now for our story. Excuse me, Mr. Gillsleeve, I don't want to miss this. Yesterday, just when Ronald and Kitty were walking down the aisle together to flight their trot, Martin suddenly appeared like a ghost from the past. And Ronald found out the truth. Oof. Martin had been secretly engaged to Kitty at the time when Ronald had been in love with Ruth, the adopted daughter of Ben, the town banker. <laughs> of course, he's still in love with Martin, even though he told her at the picnic that he was in love with Kitty, who was about to marry Ronald. Who could untangle these lies? Not me. <laughs> had Martin come back to claim Kitty's hand, or was there a more sinister reason for his return? Who cares? I'm going out in the backyard. Or he may have just come back to say goodbye. That's what I say, goodbye. <laughs> Nice out here. Nice time of year, all right. Yeah. Hammock looks pretty inviting. Might lie down for a while. Hmm. Better get a new hammock this year. This one's getting pretty old. Ropes look weather beaten, too. Oh, well, I guess it'll hold me. Mm. Hard to get in these things. Mm. I made it. Ah, this is comfortable. Everybody else at work, and here I am. <laughs> Sky sure looks blue today. Just a few little clouds. Funny how clouds look like different things. There's one that's shaped like a goat. Reminds me of Judge Hooker. <laughs> What's that? Uh, bumblebee. What's he coming around me for? I'm no flower. Go away, bee. Go away. Looks like he's circling for a landing. I'm trapped in this hammock. Uh, they say if you don't move, a bee won't sting you. I'll just lie real still. He's coming closer. I won't move. He's around my nose. 
probably thinks it's a gladiola bulb. <laughs> he landed. He's walking up my nose. I'll just hold still. No, I will go away, Pete. Go on, get away. Go on now. See, he's gone. Darn bee. Almost made me fall out of the hammock. Well, I'll get settled down again. Warm out here in the sun. Makes me drowsy. Oh, my goodness, Leroy. Hi, Al. Burn, you're dead, Craig. No, you're dead. I shot you first. No, I shot you first. I shot you first. I'm going to shoot both of you. You don't get out of here. <laughs> I shot you first. Gee, God. I shot you first. I'll make him be dead. I won't be dead. Leroy, I want you two to stop this racket. Go play over at Craig's house. We were playing over there. His mother kicked us out. I don't blame her. Go play someplace else. We don't have to. What's that? And you can't make us. Now, look here, Craig. Why aren't you at work? Huh? Today isn't Sunday. Well, I don't feel very well. I'm a little sick. If you're sick, why aren't you in bed? Well, look, I don't have to explain it to you. Get out of here. I don't have to. Hey, young. What is it, Leroy? You better get out of that hammock. That rope's going to break. Nonsense, my boy. It won't break. It will, too. You're too fat. Oh, <laughs> Look here, you little squirt. I'm going to get... Bang! I got you that time, Craig. Get in that. Bang! I got you. Bang! Bang! I got Oh, I'll never get any rest out here. I'm going back in the house. There. Now, you two be quiet out here. What a morning. I'm going to get in the hammock. No, you're not. Yes, I am. I'm going to get in right now. No, you're not. Yeah, I told you I'd get in. Look out, Craig. The rope's going to break. Oh, the hammock broke and Craig fell down. He did? Well, that's too bad. (laughs) We'll be back with the great Gildersleeve in just a minute. You know, friends, Bertie is certainly right when she says that... That parquet margarine sure does taste good. And millions of women agree. They buy parquet margarine just because it tastes so good. My sentiments exactly. They know parquet is a top quality product because it's made by Kraft. They know it's nourishing because it's made from only carefully selected farm products and because each delicious pound is enriched with 15,000 units of important vitamin A. I don't know about vitamins, but I know what tastes good. Women have learned that this delicious, fresh-flavored spread is economical, too. Yes, parquet margarine is a real money saver. It sure helps the old food budget, I know. Tasty parquet margarine is the perfect topping for bread, rolls, muffins, pancakes, and waffles. It's nourishing, it's economical, and it... And like I said, it tastes so good. Right, Bertie. Parquet is the better buy for both bread and budget. Try appetizing parquet margarine one time, and you'll serve it from then on. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y... Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Well, the great Gildersleeve's little scheme of playing sick isn't working out very well. It's afternoon now, and the great man is in the living room. He's had no rest and no food except grapefruit juice. Now, you drink that, Mr. Gilsley. Bertie, I've had seven glasses already. It's running out of my ears. You're a sick man, Mr. Gilsley, and I'm doing this for your good. Yes, but if I don't eat, Bertie, I'm liable to waste away. I wouldn't worry, Mr. Gilsley. <laughs> You've got a lot to waste away on. Yeah. <laughs> Bertie, couldn't I just have a tiny little sandwich? I'm sorry, Mr. Gilsley, but you know what they say. You've got to starve a cold and feed a fever. Yeah. What a day this has been. Should have gone to work. At least I could have had some. Uh, Bertie's starting to clean house. Yeah. Maybe I can sneak out in the kitchen. 
steal something out of the refrigerator. <laughs> yeah, better tiptoe. Mustn't let Bertie hear me. I'll be as quiet as a little mouse. Floor squeaks. I can just make the kitchen. I'll open the door real easy. Hiya! Oh! <laughs> Leroy, what are you doing in that refrigerator? I was just getting a piece of cake. You, you know you're not supposed to eat cake between meals. Now go outside and play. What are you doing out in the kitchen, Aunt? Kitchen? Well, I lost my way. I thought this was a den. Ah! Uh, Leroy! If I told Bertie you were out here, boy. <laughs> well, I guess one piece of cake won't hurt a growing boy. Thanks, Aunt. The refrigerator's all yours. Darn kids getting too smart. Let's see here. Food. Uh, lamb chops. Yeah, guess they wouldn't be any good raw. <laughs> What's this wrapped up in wax paper? Mmm, fried chicken legs. There's some craft cheese. Let's see. What'll I have first? Excuse me. Uh, hello, Bertie. What are you doing in that refrigerator? Uh, well, my head felt a little hot. <laughs> Just thought I'd stick it in there and cool it off. <laughs> well, you get right back on that sofa. You can't have nothing to eat. All right, Bertie. <laughs> That's one time I fooled Bertie. You didn't see me take that chicken leg. <laughs> Got it in my pocket here. Pretty smooth, Gildersley. <laughs> yeah, here it is. Hmm. <sighs> Food at last. Who's that? I'll get it. Afternoon, Bertie. Oh, hello, sir. Oh, Hooker. Who asked him over? The old windbag? I understand our water commissioner is slightly under the weather today. Yes, he's out cold. I thought I'd drop by and cheer up the invalid. Oh, he's coming in. I better lie down, pull a blanket over me. I'll act real sick. Maybe I can get rid of him. Hello, Gilda. Hey, you sound like you have a bad cold, Gilda. Uh, pretty bad, Judge. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, old friend. In that case, I'll just stay a minute. Good. What? I mean, uh, I wouldn't want you to catch my cold. <laughs> <laughs> Here, Gildy, let me tuck you in. There must be a draft in... Gildy, what's this? Huh? In this wax paper here. Why, it's a chicken leg. It is? Well, how did it get there? Gildy, you weren't planning to eat that, were you? Me? I couldn't eat a chicken leg in my condition. Well, in that case, I'll eat it. Oh. <laughs> I'll just sit down here beside you. <laughs> Mine is very tasty. <laughs> yes, sir, it's really delicious. Hooker, do you have to smack your lips like that? Oh, I'm sorry, Gildy. Too bad you're sick. You'd really enjoy this chicken. Oh, goat. There, all finished. I'll just deposit the bone in this ashtray. Well, I really should be going. <laughs> yes, Judge. Goodbye. Goodbye, old friend. And I hope the morrow finds you in... Well, probably another visitor, Gildy. Uh, I could get more rest than this at the office. Why don't people let me alone? Why, it's Peavy. Oh, my goodness. Yes, sir. Come right in. Hello, Peavy. Good afternoon, Judge. Hello, Mr. Gildy, please. Hello, Peavy. I thought I'd drop by and inquire after your health, I... Left the drugstore in the care of Mrs. Peavy. Uh, well, thanks for coming over. I suppose you're in a hurry to get back to Mrs. Peavy. No, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Are you feeling any better, Mr. Gildersleeve? Right now, I feel horrible. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Gildy, if you feel so bad, don't you think you ought to call a doctor? I don't need a doctor. All I need is to be left alone. Well, you shouldn't take any chances, old friend. Peavy, you're a druggist. Suppose you take his pulse. 
take his part? Now, look here, quiet, fellas. Quiet, Gilly. Go ahead, Peter. Well, I don't know if that would be ethical. I'm not an M.D. I'm just a pharmacist. But we can't refuse to help a friend in his hour of need. Oh, well, to put it that way. Ooh, put whatever. your finger on his wrist. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Gilly, please. Mm -hmm. If I may have your wrist, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> I feel just like Dr. Kildare. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How's his pulse? Uh, no, I can't find it. Well, everybody has a pulse. Mr. Gildersleeve doesn't. I do, too. Uh oh here it is. I feel it now. <laughs> bumpity, bumpity, bumpity. <laughs> Ye gods. Wait a minute, Petey. I'll get my watch out and we'll time this. When I give you the signal, you start counting. Are you ready? Ready. Look, fellas. On your mark, get set, go. Bumpity, bumpity. No, 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 no. Count, Petey. Uh-oh. One, two, three, four... Fine. This whole thing is ridiculous, Now, Hoss. now, lie quiet, Gildy. You're a sick man, you know. I am not. I mean, uh, yes. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Now, uh, who's that? Ah, Gildy! Well, another visitor. When you're ill, Gildy, that's when you learn who your true friends are. Everyone that flatters thee is no friend in misery. Twenty-one, twenty-two... Words are easy, like the wine. Faithful friends are hard to find. Oh, brother. He's right in there, Miss Fairchild. Thank you, Bertie. Why, it's Miss Fairchild. Why, Brother Morton, what's this about you being sick, you poor man, you? Hello, Adeline. Good afternoon, Miss Fairchild. Uh, hello, Judge. Hello, Mr. Peavy. Hello, 45, 46, 47. <laughs> Mercy, what's he doing? Mr. Peavy is taking Gildy's pulse with my assistance. Well, isn't that cute, you two playing doctor? Yes, well, I'm glad you came over, Adeline. Well, I thought you'd be here all alone, so I wanted to come over and keep you company. Well, I will be alone in just a minute. The judge and Peavy were just leaving, weren't you, Horace? Well. Now, Philip Morton, that isn't nice to rush your friends off like that. Friends. And don't look so grouchy. You'll never get well that way. How would you like little Adeline to cheer you up? Well. <laughs> I'll turn on the radio and we'll get some music. Oh. A splendid idea. A splendid idea. <laughs> there you are. Isn't that pretty? I just love waltzes. I wish we could dance, Throckmorton. Too bad you're sick. Funny, I feel better now. Maybe I could now, get now, up. Now, now, Gildy, you just lie back there. You're sick, you know. But just... Miss Fairchild, I was quite a waltzer in my youth. Would you care to tread a measure with me? Why, I just love to, sir. But Adeline, you came over to see me. Fine friends. Having a party while I'm sick. Well, I could be sick. Hold on tight now. We're going to spin. If I feel so light on my feet, I could just fly out the window. Not a bad idea. <laughs> oh, shut up. Okay. 102, 103. Oh, my goodness. Rock Morton, are you in pain? Why, we ought to be ashamed of ourselves. Huh? Dancing and having a good time and all while you're lying here sick. It's all right. Oh, no, it isn't. Shouldn't be having a party right here in front of you. I'm going to shoo all these people out of here. Uh, now take them over to my house. What? We can carry on the party over there where we won't disturb you. A party? Why, that's splendid, Miss Fairchild. I am in rather a festive mood. So am I, 138, 138. <laughs> We'll leave right now, Throckmorton, so you can get some rest. But Adeline... I'll fix a pick-up dinner and we can invite all our friends. But can't you stay with me, Adeline? Now, now, Gildy, you said you wanted to be alone. We'll miss you, Throckmorton. <laughs> you get a good rest now, you hear me? But... Gildy, <clears throat> please. What is it? Dr. Peavy reporting. You have a pulse of 175. Oh, what's the use? <laughs> On the doorstep. Hello, Miss Gilsey. Ah, oh, Bertie. Well, how do I look? Oh, you look fine, Mr. Gilsey. All dressed up and everything. Thank you. 
Well, I guess I better be getting over to Adeline's party. Kind of surprised her. My, you sure got well in a hurry. Yeah, <laughs> guess I did. Guess that grapefruit juice did it. I knew I was right. You stopped. Yes, but... yes, you were right, Brady. <laughs> well, I'll be getting... Somebody at the door. I'll get it. Wait a minute, Bertie. Let's see who it is first. I'll just peek out of the window here. Ye gods, it's the mayor. Well, I'm supposed to be sick. What'll I do? I'll lie down on the sofa here. Mr. Gillespie, what are you... Bertie, throw that blanket over me quick. Huh? I, I thought you was all wet. I was. I just had a relapse. Oh, you want some more great food, too? No, Bertie. Get the door. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'll just pull this blanket up. Well, I'll get rid of him. Good evening, Master Willis. Come in. Good evening. All right, drop by and see how Mr. Gildersleeve is feeling. Well, he ain't feeling so good right now. You said it. Hello, Gildersleeve. How do you feel? Hello, Mr. Mayor. Well, I knew you had to stay home from the office today, but I didn't realize you were so sick. Yes. I guess I've got it pretty bad. Why, Mr. Gildersleeve, you have your hat on. Hat? Oh. Uh, yes. I have to keep my head warm. Pretty drafty in here. <laughs> Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't come too close, Mr. Mayor. I wouldn't want you to catch it. Well, I... It's in fact, it's dangerous for you to be in the same room. <laughs> well, uh, maybe you're right. Uh, perhaps I'd better go now. Yes, good idea. Good night, Mr. Gildersleeve. And I hope you'll be up on your feet very soon. Uh, I'll be on my feet, all right. As soon as you get out of here. Well, <laughs> I'd better be on my way. Miss Fairchild is expecting me. <laughs> Miss Fairchild? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, she's uh, having a little party tonight, and she was kind enough to invite me. You're going to the party? Why, yes. I'm sorry you won't be able to join us. Well, Gildersleeve, take care of yourself. And don't forget, you're a sick man. I sure am. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be right back, folks. The best things that can be said about parquet margarine are said by the millions of homemakers who serve it every day. They say it's delicious, fresh, and wholesome. They say it tastes so good. Yes, millions of women all over America say parquet margarine is their favorite spread for rolls, muffins, pancakes, and waffles, as well as bread. Next time you shop, ask for parquet margarine. You'll love that tasty, fresh flavor. You'll like the fact that Parquet is a real money saver. Try Parquet, the margarine of craft quality. It's the better buy for both bread and budget. That P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine. What's your fault? Mm. Alarm. Ooh, time to get up and go to work. Mm. Yeah, got the sniffles. Got a headache, too. This time I'm really getting a cold. Maybe I'd better stay home today. No, I'll never do that again. I'm going to work. Good morning. I mean, good night, folks. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry, Adeline Fairchild by Miss Una Merkel. The show is written by Gene Stone and Jack Robinson, with music by Jack Neakin and sound effects by Monty Fraser. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Louise Erickson, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Wall saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Tomorrow night, don't forget Al Jolson on the Kraft Music Hall, heard over most of these NBC stations. Don't miss it. I won't. Remember, tomorrow night, for exact time, see your local paper. And be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Ladies, listen to this amazing offer. A stainless steel cake and pie knife with a gleaming six-inch serrated blade and a handle of beautiful agatron. 
an honest dollar and a quarter value, and it's yours for just 35 cents and one label from a package of Pabstet, the delicious cheddar cheese food. That's right, the perfect cake and pie knife for kitchen and table use. It's yours for less than half its regular price. Send 35 cents plus one Pabstet package label to the Phoenix Pabstet Company, Box 1723, Chicago 77. That address again, the Phoenix, P-H-E-N-I-X, Pabstep Company, Box 1723, Chicago 77. Get your knife today. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.